Okay, so a question for you, which of these spreadsheets would you rather work with? We've got our first spreadsheet coming here, and this is the kind of data you probably work with day in, day out. What do you think about it? And then what do you think about this spreadsheet? And this spreadsheet is actually the same data. It's actually the same data just with effective Excel formatting. Which one would you rather work with? I know I'd probably rather work with this one. In this video, I've got 14 Excel formatting techniques, super easy that you can start using in your Excel practice to start making spreadsheets look really good and make you and your colleagues feel more compelled to work with them. Yes, I do think we can achieve beauty in Excel, but if we're meeting for the first time, a big welcome to Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. I'm Chris Mortimer. I'm an Excel content creator, real world consultant and lecturer, and I love bringing the powerful stuff in Excel to people like you. Now, we wanna set you on the right track with your Excel learning. You can go ahead and download our free Excel cheat sheet. I've laid it out all for you, the things you do and don't need to know. It comes with some non-public videos and our Excel formula trainer tool. The link is in the video description below. You just pop your email in and it will be sent to you. So with that said, let's get into the download file. Make sure you download the download file and work along with me. So tip number one is to leave a few rows at the top or columns to the right of your data. And if we go to the example, you can see we've just got these little buffers and I think they help calm everything down a bit and help us engage with the data. So firstly, the columns, if we go into Excel, control and space bar, control shift and plus, and then plus again, it allows us to put those columns in. If you wanna use the mouse, you can right click and go to insert. And then to put some rows in, uh, the keyboard shortcuts, shift and space bar, and then control shift plus and plus, and we've got our rows in there. So we won't leave it just like this, but we've got a bit of buffer around the data. And for me, that just calms things down, down a bit and encourages us to engage with the data more. Then we should be looking at consistent column widths. And I've got this idea of multiples of a base number, which I use in all my Excel files, and you can start using this idea too. What that means is we take a, a base number, which I usually use five or seven, then we use multiples of that number for the column width. So for example, this column, Alt H O W on the Windows PC and five and enter, I'm gonna to change to five. You can also go to home and format and then to column widths uh, to change the column width there. So this is column width five. So I wanna use multiples of five now. So Alt H O W and 10, two times five being 10, of course, for this column. And then for this column, we can see a common problem with Excel formatting. The column width is insufficient for the data. That's why we're getting all those hashtags. Alt H O W 15, which is also a multiple of five. And then over here for the first name and surname, 15 is also gonna do the job. So I don't have to type in Alt H W again. I can hit the F4 key on the Windows PC to repeat the last action. Suddenly there's some uniformity in the column widths, but we don't want all the columns to be the same size. That's why I recommend using this base number. I'm just gonna have a, click, a quick look down the data and I can see those column widths working really nicely there. Tip number three, I think you've got to change the default font. It's very likely the default font on your system like mine is Calibri. I recommend using Arial. Control shift right, control shift down here. Then we can go to home, click in the little uh, font cell here, the font box, type in Arial and hit enter. Suddenly I think that has a really big effect on the overall look of the spreadsheet, which font you choose. And I recommend of course, using a single font, certainly if you're getting started with this kind of thing. But the interesting thing about different font types is they're actually different sizes, aren't they? And now I think that the writing is actually competing a bit with the borders of the cell. So when I switch to Arial, I also take the size down a bit, Alt H F S, just gonna take it down one. And for me now the text is fitting in the cell better. So we've changed uh, to Arial font there. I do recommend Arial. Now we've thought about column widths, also got to think about row heights. And is the row height competing with the text? So what's the default row height going to be? Alt H O H on the Windows PC. Obviously it's 14.4. I've got no idea why the default row height is 14.4. I like to make it 15. So Alt H O H 1.5 for 15. 
control shift and down and then f4 is going to repeat the last action i do admit that one is a little bit pedantic just setting it to 15 but it's a round number and then we can follow through this rule we've got consistent row heights apart from the row header but we apply the same principle as we applied to the columns to the row so alt h o h i can see we need more height here to get the text in i'm going to go for 45 because 45 is a multiple of 15 of course and all these things i'm sure deep in the subconscious are just making things look neat and tidy and encouraging people to engage with the data which of course is the purpose of formatting so we've got a different um column header here different row height for the column header we want to wrap this text you can see this text is problematic so we're going to select all of these hold down the shift key alt h w allows us to wrap the text and i can see control z here i can see i've got a problem with this column so i'm going to adjust the column width alt h o w 10 if you did want to auto size the column alt h o i allows you to do that but as i said i'm not breaking my principles even uh, just just in that situation so i'm going to put 10 in there okay so consistent row heights and we've talked about wrapping text as well now what about using a comment i do like this one where you've got a long column header or a row header I should, no, this is a column header, of course, where you've got a long column header. I really try to keep these column headers brief because we want people to be able to read them really quickly when they're assimilating the data. So I'll do something like just say salary here. I'm just going to hit control X. So we change this to salary. And then I'm going to go to review and then new comments. And what I've just um, cut out of the column header there, I'm going to put into a cell comment and then just click here and we can see now when we hover over the cell we have that additional supporting information popping up so it's like we've got an additional layer of information but more importantly the column header is nice and simple okay you can also consider hiding columns so if you're not at the stage where you're inputting data you know do we even need to see this column at all alt h o u and then c for column will allow us to hide the column. You can also go to format, of course, format, hide and unhide, and then hide column. So the column is still there if we want to use it, but we want the minimum amount of data to tell the story we want to tell. That salary column is repeated. So I'm just going to hide it for the time being. I can all, always bring it back later. What about a color scheme? A really controversial topic in Excel, isn't it? I think simplicity is the key. So how should you create a color scheme? Choose one color. That's all you need, one color. We're gonna have different variations of that color. I'm just gonna choose green. Now this is my super simple formatting scheme. So I've chosen green. I want a dark green color. I'm gonna go for this green. And then for the column headers, I'm gonna go for white text on a dark color white text on a dark color i'm going to do more than that i'm going to make this text bold control b and then i'm going to make the lettering uppercase so i'm going to use the upper formula here open the brackets and then select the cell hit enter and then hold down the shift key and right arrow control r to autofill right and then control c and then using shift and arrows again control alt v and v allows me to drop those values in that's just because i like uh capital i like uppercase for column headers so i'm going to just reduce the size here alt h f s 9 and that for me is a really nice column header so now what would we do uh with the main text well i'd recommend just with the first column use a lighter version a lighter shade of that color so i'm just going to go for light green hair and this is my super simple formatting scheme let's do a couple of things with these these buffer columns now alt h w three column width three is the default column width i use for my buffer columns so so those columns over on the left and already i think things are looking a lot better here but what about this uh title now, do you even need a title? You might be able to say, well, you can see what the uh, spreadsheet is doing from the name of the spreadsheet down at the bottom here. However, um, I'm going to put a title in and I'm going to use a, a little bit of a fancy formatting effect here. First, I'm going to copy the format. So remember, you can copy format. So Control-C, 
controller and V and T is going to allow me to copy these formats. Now, I actually want to unwrap this text. So Alt H W will allow me to do that. And to get the formatting effect I want, I want to merge this cell. Now, I don't recommend merging cells generally in Excel. In this case, it allows us to achieve our formatting effect. So Alt H M A is going to allow me to merge that cell into a single cell. Then Alt H O E, or let's use the mouse for this one. You can just right click and go to format cells. Alt H O E will allow you to do that. Now, the formatting effect I like, if I want to get a little bit fancy, is to use some kind of gradient fill. So if we go to fill effects here, uh, we want to go vertical and then color two is going to be the darker color here. So I'm going to start with our very dark green. And this, I think, is what we want. Then I hit OK. That gives us a little bit of a fancy formatting effect. So it's not about being fancy in Excel, but just a little bit here and there can work like, you know, the icing on the cake. So that's my super sim simple color scheme for Excel using a dark color with white text as an alternative for the title of the worksheet or for the column headers here. I do recommend that differentiation in font size for page title. Are you using different font sizes now for the page title? I think you've got two approaches here. You can make it small and you can argue, well, people don't need, really need to read that all the time. So we're just going to make it smaller so it doesn't catch their attention. Or you could argue, no, 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 I really want people to understand what this sheet is about. So I'm going to make that big at the top there. But either way, differentiation in font size can really help the things you want to stand out on the worksheet actually stand out. I'm going to go Control Z here and I'm going to go for my original sizing there. So some differentiation in font size. What about cell borders? Haven't spoken about cell borders yet. So the easiest approach is just to go for all the borders. So Control Shift and right and down Alt H B A on the Windows PC is going to give you all the borders. Now, I don't actually use that. Why not? Well, that it's just a bit too much for me. It's too many borders. I recommend just using horizontal borders, just horizontal borders. It's going to keep things a bit cleaner and, in my opinion, a bit more readable. Alt H O E here, and then we're going to go to border. I'm going to make things a little bit classier by using dark gray rather than black. And then if we click at the top, in the middle and at the bottom here, it's going to give us our borders, but just our horizontal borders here. Personally, I love this look. And then you can go Alt W, Alt W V G. That's going to remove the grid lines. You can also go to View and Grid Lines here, and the grid lines are going to come and go. So looking a lot better, I think. What else have we got? Switching off the grid lines, tip 13. Then finally, consider different line styles, heavier at the top or on the left. And this is my final point here. So once again, uh, just for the row below the headers, Alt H O E, I just want a slightly um, heavier line here. So I know this line is a heavier line and I want it at the top of the cell. There we go. And you can see we've got, can't see it that well, but we do have a heavier line there. Alt H O E here, pick that heavier line. This time I want it on the right. And we can see now with the data, it's got this kind of nice framing. It doesn't come through that well on the screenshot, but you can experiment with this and maybe use a heavier line. That's going to really, again, a bit of an icing on the cake kind of point. But for me, just really makes things look really smart and makes people want to engage with the data. That's what we want, isn't it? OK, Alt W F F finally is going to freeze panes. That means as we go down the data, uh, you can see we're keeping those headers at the top there. So that's how I create a professional look in Excel. We've gone from basic data to this look. Personally, I'd much rather work with this data. But what are your Excel formatting techniques? What secret weapons do you have in terms of presentation in Excel? Let me know in the comments below this video. I hope this video has been helpful to you. The next video to watch is in the pinned comment below this video. I'll see you there.